Well, good morning, everybody. And I think it's good afternoon over there in San Diego, isn't it, Ragna? It is. It's four o'clock here. Yeah. Four Getting o'clock. ready to start our happy hour. Well <laughs> done. I hope everybody's doing fantastically well in Australia and in the US. We've got a very special guest for episode 95 of Playing With Perspective, the suspended animation podcast. All the way from San Diego, I have Rhonda Salvestrini. How are you, Rhonda? I'm great, Darren. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so Uh, excited to be here. My pleasure. And I can't wait to get into it. We're going to be teaching people how to kiss their writing stuck goodbye. Overcome the overwhelm and feel energized and excited about the writing process. Because I know it's quite tricky for some people and it's quite overwhelming. But um, Rhonda is the lady to talk to because she is an expert and writing coach. She's on a mission to help writers overcome their overwhelm, find confidence in their voice as an authority, be inspired to bravely and fearlessly connect with their audience through authenticity. With over 25 years experience as a professional writer, she's helped aspiring writers, longtime authors and speakers transform their messy, disorganized, and awkward content into beautifully written stories that move audiences and motivate them to take action. I love that. How cool is that? Thank you. <laughs> Linda, welcome. Thank you. This is so fun. I'm so excited oh, to be on your show. I'm very excited. I'm, you know, I feel I, we spoke just before, obviously, it's 38 degrees Celsius over there in the US, in San Diego, and we're just moving into spring, so I'm very jealous. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, tell us a bit about you that I might not have already covered. Gosh, I've uh, I've been a writer since I was a kid. I love to write. I've always loved to write, and so I was able to turn my passion into my profession. And you know, I worked in corporate um, in high tech for some very Uh, popular companies like Sony PlayStation, doing a lot of communications for them, building communications departments and training writers and just, you know, in the corporate world. But I've always, on the side, I've always helped people get their stories out of them. And that's one of my most favorite things to do in the whole wide world. I'd love to know, how did you start as a writer? What was your first memory as a writer? Did you write it? You know, or how did you it, it, it's interesting you ask that because I always thought that it was when I was introduced to journaling in seventh grade. Yep. Um, actually, it was like part of a class I was in and, and I just fell in love with it. But I was going through some boxes the other day, just cleaning out some clutter because, you know, that's what we've all been doing during lockdown. <laughs> and I actually found a story I had written my mom in second grade. I guess I was homesick. She put on, she wrote on the back of it, Rhonda homesick, and she put the date on it. And I had written a story for her. So obviously I loved it when I was seven. (laughs) Did she give you an A plus, gold star? You know, I think she did give me a little star on it, but that was about (laughs) it. Fantastic. Well, I mean, really looking forward to getting into this because I hear this every day. Everybody says, oh, how do I create content? I'm not creative. I'm not a writer. Do I need to hire a copywriter? All this kind of stuff. I hear it time and time again. So I want to really unpack and uncover the process and the philosophy and the psychology behind writing. And it's really not as bad as it seems, not as hard as it seems. It's not. I mean, I, I get the angst. Don't get me wrong. I understand how scary it can be to put content out there because we're opening ourselves up. As my one friend used to say, you're opening up your kimono to the world. When you write, you're putting yourself out there, you're being vulnerable. And that's a really scary place to be, especially in today's digital world, when you've got people just very comfortable to comment and criticize behind their keyboard. So getting out of that headspace and getting into the mindset of educating someone, um, sharing your story to help somebody, that has a different kind of motivation, if you will. It's a different mindset. And I'm, I'm all about helping business owners and nonfiction authors and TEDx speakers. And it, it's so important to get your story out there. And especially with nonfiction, if you will, or business writing, it's very intentional. There's no fluff behind it. You're writing to be purposeful. You have 
you have a goal behind this. And so it's really to educate and, and bring awareness to your audience. So bringing that mindset into it, that someone really wants to learn from you, I think really flips the switch for people. And that's what I kind of say a lot as well, as I say, if you have something interesting to share, a great story to tell, it's your duty to write. It's your duty <sighs> to get it out there. Don't hold it yes. back. Don't hold it in. You know, you've, I got love that. you've got to get over that fear, but that's a really good one. I mean, it's scary. It's frustrating. It's, vul it's vulnerable. It's exposing. Yeah. How do we, how do we overcome that? What are some of the ways to overcome that? You know, I think we just have to trust and believe in what we're putting out there is our authentic voice. It's what we need to share with our audience. Like you said, we have a duty to do that. And especially as a business owner, you do, you have a duty to connect with your audience on a different level and that's through content. Yep. So you need to just push all the lies of your self doubt to the side <laughs> yep. and say, no, I have something to say and I'm going to say it. And you need to just really believe in yourself and be kind to yourself. And the more you do it, the more comfortable you become doing it and the more excited you are when people engage in your content. I mean, that's, Absolutely. it's the validation that we say we don't need, but we really oh, need yeah. it. It's like, it's like a drug when you start getting positive. <laughs> it is so. People yes. say, oh, that was really great. That really helped me. You, you just want to do more. You do want to do more because you feel inspired. And you're right. It is a drug and people have called it that their drug of choice. Yeah. 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 I love it. Fantastic. I mean, and, and, you know, I find, you know, a lot of times when you want to sit down and come up with something, you might not always have something to come up with, but if you've taken some notes during the day, when you've had some other downtime and you've had a coffee or you've gone for a walk or a drive, all these great ideas pop into your head, just put down, in your little notepad on your phone or even in a traditional notepad and pen. And later on, when you have to write about something, you've got a whole list of stuff to write about. The content yes. is people struggle with, what am I going to write about? Right. So I have so many ideas about that. Yeah. I love pen and paper. Pen and paper is just kind of a solace for me. It slows down your thinking and it really drives a different part of your brain and allows you to really focus. You're not distracted by something that's popping up on the computer screen or anything else. You really can concentrate pen to paper. Yep. But I find that inspiration can come in so many different forms. And reading, of course, will give you inspiration because, yep, somebody's already written about your topic yep. for sure. Yep but they haven't written about it from your perspective Definitely. and they'm sure they've left some information out. So there are gaps in there that you get to fill yeah. with your knowledge and your expertise. So yes, during the day, think about different topics and, and some of the best ideas come when you aren't thinking about Definitely. it. It happens to me all the time. Me too. Um, but definitely use other people's content for inspiration and just build on it and start there instead of looking at that blank screen that's giving you the finger and laughing at you, <laughs> you know, just really use other people's content for inspiration and fill in the gaps and go deeper into the information and Perfect. just really have, put your spin on it. Yeah. Put your voice around it. Use your Absolutely. voice. Absolutely. All of a sudden, it's amazing how you'll draw that out and it'll become a totally different piece of content. And the beauty of it is that you can repurpose that content Definitely. across different platforms. You know, you can pull out a sentence here or a paragraph there and make it a Facebook post or a LinkedIn post. There's so many possibilities for that one blog or one article that you've written. There's so many things you can do with it as well as create more content on top of it. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? That's the most interesting thing because like I might have a great idea and I say, okay, I'm going to sit down and write something even if it's just a line or two, but until I put those words on the screen and start playing with the cadence and the flow and the melody of the, the words and how they sit, then it starts to take life and starts to have, do something magical. You know, so yes. that's the best ideas, but until you have to <sighs> sit down and make those words fit with what you want to try to say, you always sometimes end up changing the whole thing because it has to fit melodically. You are speaking my language. <laughs> and I love that you compare it to music and you say that it has a melody because it does. And writing does, it has a tone and a cadence. And 
a pace language, about it. Language has a cadence. Language yes. has a melody. And you, I know being Italian, studied, <laughs> I've studied Italian, but Italian language is a perfect example because every word ends in a vowel. So the Italian language yes. is like a melody. So and I've, you know, I've always said that my, my name is kind of sing-songy, yes. Rhonda Salvestrini. Yes. And you're right, it, it, language, language definitely has a cadence and so should your writing. And I, I think one of the best, the best writing happens when you're not thinking about it, when you give yourself permission to really write fearlessly and Great. sit down and know that, as Ernest Hemingway said, that your first draft is going to be shit, <laughs> but it's actually full of so many nuggets of information because you're allowing yourself just to bleed on the page, just to write without editing, without really thinking you're getting into your flow and you're just letting the words happen authentically. I love it. I mean, I, I could talk about this forever. I just think- Me too. <laughs> In terms of, you know, people finding their own voice and fine tuning their own voice. That's obviously, a, you know, something that is a little trickier for people to develop. What are your thoughts around that? So your voice is your authenticity. It really is truly who you are your values, what you believe in, and really how you want to um, come across to your audience, who, how you want them to know you. Like, I'm a little quirky. I'm not afraid to admit it. Um, but I want people to feel very comfortable with me. And I've been told that I bring out the stories in people. So that's beautiful. That's my voice. That's who I am. I have a lot of passion about writing. And so someone else who might be uh, maybe a holistic coach or a, a health coach might be very passionate about that. And when you're speaking authentically, that's your voice. There's no looking for it. It's really who you are. And I, I, I oftentimes tell my clients, when you're sitting down and you're kind of struggling to write, think about having a conversation with one person, just one. Yep. You're having that conversation and right in that tone, that's your voice. That's who you are authentically. Yeah, and that's actually a really good point. I mean, a lot of times people tend to try and write in the third person or try and write, you know, as somebody else. But I think if you just write as you speak, it's so much more engaging and right. people can really connect with you. Is that, would you say that's true? Absolutely true. And that's what you're trying to do is you're really trying to connect with someone you don't know. Yeah. You, you're wanting to engage them and you're wanting them to be a part of your tribe, if you will. And so the more authentic you can be, the more you can open up, then the more they're going to trust you, like you and get to know you and want to do business with you. Yeah. So, perfect, yes. Perfect. And same goes for punctuation. Like a lot of people, oh. the new generation, they write in a very different way. Um, a style with no punctuation and, and but it's cool it's kind of it really kind of bleeds all it has its own rhythm so I, mean, I suppose that's part of the authenticity everybody does I guess that. so I guess so I mean I'm not like a punctuation but I, I, I do I do love the mechanics of writing um, I grew up of course without social media so yeah. it wasn't around when I was growing up so I learned to write very, very formally, if you will, but it has saved me through grad school and, and going to college. So yeah. I think punctuation is necessary. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise you just have these big run on sentence. Sure. They have their own cadence, but do they ever stop? Yeah, 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 <laughs> They're yeah. like a Virginia Woolf novel. You just feel like you're <laughs> reading one long sentence. <laughs> my, my biggest um, issue is I use too much punctuation. Like I'll put three exclamation marks, then another exclamation mark. <laughs> Then another question mark, and then I read back and saying, my God, I better just tone this down a bit. Yeah, don't yell at your audience. <laughs> I like the semicolon. I'm a big fan of the yeah. semicolon. So. Yeah, I love, I love putting energy into it and trying to yeah, you know, be a little definitely. bit provocative sometimes. But. That's great, yes. Awesome, but Rhonda, let's talk about um, coaching and writing coaching. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do we need, a co how do we know if we need a coach and who needs a coach? And, you know, when, do we, when should we seek coaching and guidance for how we write? I think it's based on your project, definitely. So if you're writing a book, that's a big bohemic project. And you want a writing coach who's going to help you through the process, who's going to give you accountability, who's going to make sure 
you have structure, your outline is good, you're not going off track, you're staying the course, you're telling this beautiful story, that's when you really want um, a writing coach for sure. Smaller pieces also require or can demand a writing coach. I had a client come to me the other day who has this booming business and we had been talking about the um, kind of the necessity of blogging for your business and how you can really reach people on a different level when you're blogging for your business. And she wasn't really sure what that meant. Yeah. And so she's like, I don't even know what a blog is. She said, how do I do this? So we were starting from scratch, but it goes from one spectrum to the other. And I've had other clients who need SEO content written. And that's also part of, of writing coaching because you want to make sure you're understanding the mechanics of Google, but also writing for an audience in a very authentic tone that you're not making it too yeah. computer driven, if you exactly. will. You're not putting so the it, same terms in six times in the sentence yeah. just for the SEO. Yeah. Just for the SEO. Yeah. Right. So, so I think it's all really based on your project, but at the same time, if you're stuck, if you're feeling really overwhelmed by your project and you just don't know how to get back on track, that's where a writing coach can really come in and help and get you on track and really help you overcome your stuck and just get to the nitty gritty of what's going on and, and really help you just get on your way to really feeling excited about the writing process again. I love it. That's awesome. And so that can be, it can be per project, even if it's a small one or a lot per longer term project, however you want to, you want to work it. However you want to work it. I mean, all of my packages are customized. I have, of course, monthly coaching available, but I like to customize packages because everybody has a different journey. Yeah. So it's not a one size fits all by any means. I love it. How cool. So let's talk a bit more about how you work and how you coach people and how you kind of get them out of that stuck zone and get them into a zone where they just love writing. I'd love to hear you know, how you work and how you do that. You know, I've, um, gosh, it, again, it's based on their project, but I had, I had an author come to me a couple of years ago. He was writing a memoir. It was a very tragic story about the loss of his son. He needed a ghostwriter. He needed an editor. He needed a coach. And so he had, had, he had this manuscript, but he just, it was in a good first draft form, but he was so close to it that he just couldn't see beyond what he had written. He was really stuck in his own kind of muck, if you will, his own, he was stuck in his own stuck of not being able to get out of his story to see the bigger picture. So he handed it to me. And of course the first read I'm, all over it with, with my pen in <laughs> hand and understanding where he's stuck because things just weren't in the right order. Yeah. So he was really frustrated with himself, which he had no reason to be. He had a beautiful first draft. We just needed to move some things around. We needed to go deeper into his story to bring his audience in because you're taking your audience on a journey, regardless of whether you're writing a book, a blog post, anything, you're still taking your reader on a journey. So he didn't see that. So we sat down and I really walked him through the process and talked to him about how he was stuck and why he was stuck. And it's a very personal journey for every writer, whether you're writing for your business, whether you're writing your memoir. And we got through what was really holding him back. And given that it was such a personal story, there was a lot he didn't want to share, but it was necessary that we share it so that the the reader understood why things were progressing the way they were. So he had to let them in a little bit more and he was really holding back. And that can be something too that people don't realize. Well, if it's in my head, don't they know it too? No. And one of the things I remember telling him was, you you know, he was part of this big Irish Mexican family. And I said, you know, you talk about your family and nobody knows that your immediate family has 22 people in it. Wow. I mean, that's context. Yeah. People want to know that. They want to understand yeah. how close knit this giant family is yeah. so they can feel like they're a part of it. Definitely. And in the end, after 
we transformed his story and I, I helped him write a lot of it. And I, I worked as the editor on it. We published it, he published it on Amazon and the reviews were beautiful. People were saying that they sat down and they read it in one sitting, that they couldn't put it down. So that's a testament to, I think, my coaching as well, but to him getting over his fear of letting people in. And along those same lines, after the book was published, he was asked to do a TEDx talk. Really? And so I helped him write that as well, helped him write his talk. And at the end of his talk, he received a standing ovation. So uh, how amazing is that? Oh, every that. every process is different, but it, it really gets down to having to open yourself up Definitely. to Definitely. being vulnerable. And what's interesting for me as well is you know, I'm a photographer. And one of the things you learn as a photographer is, you know, when you take your photos, you're out there taking, you're doing a shoot, or you might be doing some artistic personal work. You're very attached emotionally to that, that, that process and those photos. Yes. And it's very important to kind of sit for a week or so, let it sit mm -hmm. there and just come back in a bit of time and review that work again in a more objective way. Yes. And then you start to see it in a whole new light and then it either takes on more of any, any impact on you or it actually loses impact. And I'm, I'm assuming it's similar with writing. I was just gonna say that. It's absolutely, it, it aligns perfectly. Yeah. And I always tell people, my clients, me even, I follow this practice write your first draft, yep. even if you're on your 10th draft, <laughs> let it sit, let it sit for a few days. You need to step away from it to have a different perspective, mm -hmm. not only to see the nitty gritty of it, but to come at it with fresh eyes and to really just see how the structure of it is and whether you still like the story, whether you want to take a different direction, you'll start to notice the gaps. You'll see how things flow or whether they don't, you'll, you'll really start to form it into something that's beautiful to put out to the world. And like you said, you might come in and say, well, I don't like it at all, yeah. which happened to me in the middle of my thesis. Oh. I was- What was your thesis? <laughs> my thesis was about gender bias okay. in corporate America. Wow. And yes. <laughs> I was halfway through my thesis when I looked at it one day and deleted the whole file. I said, oh. this is not the direction I want to go in. I did select all, I pushed delete, and then oh. I sat on the floor and cried. <laughs> like, what did I just do? But I knew that wasn't the story I wanted to tell. That wasn't who, I wasn't speaking in my authentic voice. I thought I was just kind of making this this story up to just get through with the process uh -huh. and i knew in my heart of hearts that wasn't me okay. so after i deleted it and gave myself a day to just boohoo <laughs> i rewrote something that i was so proud of and received honors and just felt so much better about the piece but had i not stepped away i wouldn't have had that new perspective and that's actually a really good point so Initially, it sounds like you kind of tried to write in an inauthentic way for some reason, and then you came back to your authentic self. So why did you start to do that? Any, any insight into that? Oh, sure. I think with a thesis, especially when it comes to formal writing, when you have to follow a very stringent structure, it can put you in this different place where you feel like if you're not following the rules, you're not going to pass. And so I think that's where I was. There was so much structure to yeah. follow and each section had to have its own rules. You almost that I just everything out of it. Oh, it just took all the fun yeah. out of it. <laughs> yeah. And so I was just trying to really get through it. And when I looked at it and, and read through it, I thought, nope, this is not how I want to present myself. And this is not the legacy I want for my thesis. Yeah. And so, yeah, uh, that was, yeah, that was wow. halfway through. Delete, let's start over. <laughs> yeah, really, but you know, obviously important and it served mm -hmm. you well. It did, yeah, it was very um, important for me. So, yeah. But have you done that with photography as well? Have you looked at a project? Oh yeah, and oh yeah, all the time. Like I could take thousands of photos and then come back and say, I only keep one of those, all rubbish, let's go. <gasps> 
Oh yeah. One. Wow. Yeah, easy. Like with photography, particularly with personal photography, that's very much how it works. The, you know, the yield is very low. What you really end up with out of days and days of work is only a couple of photos if you're lucky. Oh. Um, cause that's just, cause you're looking for the magic, you know, mm -hmm. you don't just want, you won't settle for just anything. Right. You know, some of these projects can be lifetime projects that you do over and over again, even at the same place, because you want to get 10 photos in a series that are just magical. Yeah. But it's, it's a body of work that can take you a life. Sure. Wow. And it's writing, just, it's, writing it's, can be like that too. I'm sure. I was can. just going to say that. I was just going to echo those words. Yes. Yeah. I mean, some, <laughs> some pieces of work that have been written over a lifetime. Right. And some people take years to write books or years to, you know, write anything, if you will. It, sometimes people can take months just to write a single blog post and Amazing. it's getting very comfortable with the, with the process. And, setting your perfectionism aside, which I've had to do many times as well, yeah. but knowing that there is no perfect. Yeah. What you put out there is you and, and you might think it's crap or garbage, but you're going to inspire somebody else. And that's all that matters. And it's usually the case, like the stuff that you put out that you think, ah, oh, that's, that's amazing. Doesn't do so well. <laughs> right. Put out, put out, right. It's just a bit of rubbish. Everybody says, wow, I love that. <laughs> yes. So who knows? Who knows? <laughs> the answer is don't judge. Just put it out there. Just put it out there. You're right. Don't judge. Especially don't judge yourself. Yeah. Don't judge yourself because we can be our harshest critics. We are. Yes. Absolutely. And in terms of you know, you know you what you do. Do you actually only coach people how to write, or do you actually take on that outsourced um, responsibility of writing for somebody if they want to? Absolutely. Yes, I do that as well. I have served as ghostwriter for executives, oh, for you. business owners, okay. for authors, definitely. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can, I, I do ghostwrite, but I also love coaching and I love helping people use their authentic voice. But if it's just something that doesn't interest them, then absolutely. Yeah. Okay, because a lot of people will probably be thinking right now, okay, I don't love writing or I'm not so good at it in, in their own mind. Sure. And they're thinking, should I just outsource everything to a copywriter or should I try and learn how to do it myself? You know, what's the, what's, what's your response to that? So it's interesting because I've had this conversation actually with someone who owns a VA company yep. and he has a lot of people who do copywriting. And I asked him, how do you find their authentic voice? Because if it's not you, you must have a very close relationship with your ghostwriter. Yep. You must have a very friendly relationship with that person to invest the time. And he said that's what he does. And he, wasn't, he said he wasn't surprised by, my, by that question coming from me. Uh -huh. But I always tell people to try it first. And I know it can be time consuming. But at the same time, you're serving your clients in doing so. Yeah. And no one can replace your voice. No one can speak for you. Definitely. And I've seen it before. I've seen it where someone has used an outsourcing company and I received one of their emails and I actually, I was friends with her. So I called her and I said, you know, this doesn't sound anything like you. <laughs> so <laughs> you want to make sure that whomever is doing your copywriting for you knows your voice, has spent time with you knows how you think about things so that yeah. people people think that it's coming from you so i guess that's a personal choice as well as to whether you hire someone out or do it yourself gotcha. maybe you can do the first draft yourself and then hire it out to an editor yeah, to help that's you probably polish a good, it it's probably a good middle middle ground i think because yeah your, your voice your authenticity your vision is in there and it just gets cleaned up a little bit Especially your vision, because a ghostwriter is not going to be able to really capture what you're thinking unless you've, you've put it down somewhere or they've asked some really in-depth questions. But yeah. even then, you're going to, something might get lost in translation with yeah. that. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, I love it. So true. So have you got any other great case studies of how you've helped writers? Because I love, I love hearing these kind of Gosh, stories. Just so many little nuggets. Um, but um, I don't know. I mean, there's so many. <laughs> I have had, um, I did have a CEO come to me who actually stands on stages in front of thousands of people 
and told me he was afraid to put out content on LinkedIn. He said wow. it terrified him. Wow. He, he was like, it, it caused this real physical reaction in him. And I, I thought it curious because he stands in front of people yeah. doing public speaking, which is like one of the most, one of the scariest things. Definitely. Can, I can think that, that more than anything else. Exactly. And for someone to say that they're afraid to put out content based on his experience, I thought that was, a really strange dichotomy. Yes, and so, and why, so why was he afraid? Did, did you did you go? Into it was the yeah. It's the it was the judgment. It was the fear of the judgment. And so we worked together, and and I, you know I really coached him through. He had nothing to fear. I mean, he was yeah. a great writer. Yeah. So I think it's just getting that validation too. And so we worked through those fears, and I helped him as his editor to get some content out, but. He, he has nothing to fear. And I think once we get over that, then we realize it and we just really want to write. I've had other CEOs just tell me they're afraid of words. Words scare them. Wow. <laughs> so they, they don't know how to write. So I, I like to put them on um, kind of a path yeah. where they're maybe you've got four different topics or let's start with an outline. You know, what, what are some things you want to educate your audience on? And I have to really help them flip that script. And I think that helps alleviate a lot of the angst as well. When I say, okay, let's put some topics down, let's get an outline going and let's just start filling in the blanks. It's very rudimentary, very, you know, we're not sitting in front of the computer. We're going to put pen to paper and just, you know, really start noodling around with what you want to say. Then we'll put it all together and we'll shape it nicely. And then we'll take all that fear away and we'll work on the next one together. Love it. So true. And you know, that's what, you know, even there's a famous, um, for, for started off as a photography website, but now it's very creative. It's called Creative Live. You must've heard of it. Mm -hmm. One of the founders of Creative Live, his name is Chase Jarvis. And he's written a book and got a whole podcast and is very passionate about the fact that creativity is a muscle. And yes. if you exercise it every day, it gets stronger and stronger and you get better at it. And it's the same yes. thing with writing. The more you write, the better you get at it. So you right. just gotta try, you just gotta start. And it's, you become more comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. You don't, as I like to say, you get out of your own way. Yeah, yeah. But that's where I come and I help and, and I can really get you on that path to getting out of your own way. And, yeah to really see, help you see that there, there is maybe some structure that might help you or let's get through your stuck, whatever that might be. Let's find different ways to get through that and let's maybe put some topics together so you feel like you have some topics for the next year. Yeah. Let's look at the pain points of your clients. That's what you want to address. So when we break it down like that, I think it helps alleviate a lot of the fear. Definitely, definitely. And I mean, and what's, what's your view on, you know, writing these days and the word, written word these days when video, photo, graphic, audio, voice, it's all becoming very, very powerful in our social media um, ecosystem. I mean, I, I still love words and I think they're very important. They'll always be mm -hmm. here, but I'd love to get your view on how they're going to fit into everything else. But that's the beauty of it. Now we have so many different ways to communicate. And I love the written word too. I, I could sit and write for hours. Wow. But I also love to make video so that I can connect with people on a different level. They can hear my voice. Yeah. They can see my body language. They can see that I'm a little quirky. Yeah. I like to be able to communicate on that level. And I, I've actually talked to my clients and say, you know, repurpose what you've written into a video. Yeah, so true. Yeah. I, you know, or just narrate behind it. I've done that before, yeah. do a voiceover behind it. So I think we have so many different ways that just opens up how we can connect with people. Yeah. But I'm with you. The written word is so important and I don't want to see it ever go away. I still love to open a book with a pen in hand and, yeah. you know, write all over it. Wow. So <laughs> I don't like to read on a nook or anything like that. I want to have the book in front of me yeah. so I can make notes. Yeah. And, and I mean, even when you talk about video and everything else, mm -hmm. there still needs a level of preparation initially, which mm -hmm. has to come from words. You have to think right. about what you're trying to articulate, what you're trying mm -hmm. to say, what are the best ways to express that 
opinion or that um, nuance. Mm -hmm. And they have to start with words. That's where you start. So it's always, the written word is always going to be there. It um, will. The way, the vehicle in which we use it and express it. Yeah. And the fact that we have so many more ways to express it, I think is just increasing our communication level, hopefully. <laughs> so Rhonda, um, if people want to get in touch with you to learn more about how to get out of their own way in terms of a writer or maybe do some, get you to do some ghost writing or, you know, get some coaching, what's the best way for them to do that? On my website, rondasalvestrini.com and they can Everything's from the book a call with me and we can have a chat about their project or about their stock and just help them through. Awesome. And you work with individuals, with corporates, you do training sessions, you can work remotely, you can do anything. Yes. Uh, yes. Everything, which is fun. It's so all great, all especially <laughs> <laughs> all of the above, which is so great because it's just, especially now that we've all been in lockdown for so long, uh, definitely online has become um, kind of the, the choice, if yeah. you will. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Rhonda. That was enlightening. I had so oh, much dear. fun. Me I'm too. Like, thank I'm you so much. Because I really am fascinated by this subject. <laughs> I hope that everybody really got, you know, some great insight into the psychology and the, the way to start thinking about how to write and getting over that fear factor and, you know, exposing yourself on social media and everything just start small and mm -hmm. learn. But if you're looking for someone to really coach you and help you um, talk to Rhonda, because she's Thank you. definitely the one to talk to. But I always like to ask my guest before the end of the show, what are one or two tips that you might want to leave people, you know, very tactical strategies that they can bring into their writing right now to make them better writers? Start with an outline. Number one, Ooh, that's right. your map. Ooh. Your outline is your map. And don't think that it needs to be set in stone yep. because it can change. And so tip number two, don't self edit before you're ready. Ooh. Really let yourself write and get everything down. So use your outline as your map, yep. start filling in the gaps yep. and then just write freely bravely and enjoy the process and then maybe go take a break take a few days off and come back to it and see what you're doing. go take a walk because okay. walking really helps with your creativity that's so true well done well Rhonda thank you so much that was such thank a lovely you, Darren. and this uh, was so much fun absolutely and I, I hope that we've really helped everybody out there as well get in touch with Rhonda and um, we'll be back very, very soon for another episode of Playing With Perspective. I hope everybody has a fantastic day and a fantastic evening for everybody that's in the States watching us right now. Awesome. Cheers. Bye for now.